Hey guys, welcome back. It's Shelby and today I want to share a few tips about how to start a YouTube channel. Um, probably not everything that you will need. I'm going to try to be helpful, but I know there are a lot of videos out there. I watched a lot of them when I was starting. I highly suggest that you just like go search out anything you can find on the subject, but these might be like slightly different tips than what you've necessarily seen. They're not about how to actually set up the account, what settings to use, anything like that. It's more about like how to do basic framing, how to light something, you know, what equipment you need, what apps you can use that are cheap and free, and what I've been using to grow my channel because I film and edit basically exclusively on my phone. I do generally use a computer to upload, but that's just because they make it difficult to upload the cover photo from your phone for whatever reason. But I'm gonna take you through all that. I have gotten a couple questions um, mainly over Instagram, just asking, you know, from you guys, like, hey, you're starting a channel from nothing. That's where I'm at. Can you give me some pointers? And yes, I can. And I feel bad because when I reply, I reply in like paragraphs because like, you know, this stuff is kind of a little bit detailed and I want to help you, but like, I also don't want to be blowing up your phones like that. So I'm going to make this short video for you guys, hopefully short. I'm shooting for less than 10 minutes and um, yeah, we'll see what I can squeeze in here. Okay framing. So I'm in front of my wall. I'm sitting on my little stool and you can see the lighting is like helpful. These are white. These things here, these are actually really far away from me, but they look really small on camera. Um, so framing is really important. And I actually learned this from a friend who's into photography and videography. I looked into photography a lot when I started the channel and like learned about like, you know, how to frame photos and that's really helpful, <laughs> but it didn't help me with the video. So I started taking really good photos actually like a lot of people um like my photos a lot of uh, particularly mothers if I'm photographing a group or a family um or like friends at a wedding or a gathering or whatever all the moms like oh my god I look so good like you are my favorite photographer now and I'm just like okay <laughs> like you can take a basic photo and crop it just like make sure you get the whole person in there but that is that is a tangent so we are talking about filming and one thing they said is they were looking at my videos and they're like, you look, well, basically how I do now, like you're just tiny and you're on the screen. And I thought this was great because it's the majority of me on the screen and I have room to move. Like I can move my hands, I can like move my head and I'm not off screen. If you come close to the camera, you get bigger and you can go off screen. So I never really cropped in my, you know, zoom very far because then if I like moved or came closer, all of a sudden the top of my head's cropped off screen. So I always filmed like this and then I posted like this. And guess what? You're not supposed to do that. You are supposed to completely fill up the screen as much as possible. And watching other YouTubers, like as soon as they told me this, I would like start watching their YouTube stuff like, yeah, like they fill up the whole screen. And I'm not perfect at it, but you guys can definitely like, if you go back in my video, see when I just like filmed like this to when I like started cropping it in and completely filling the screen. The thing about that is, like I said, don't zoom crop yourself. Don't get so close that you can't move without going off screen because then you have to refilm everything. Film it like this and then go into the apps that I'm going to show you about and just like crop it there. So much more helpful. Same when you put the camera down, you're zooming in on your hands doing crafts. Don't over zoom. Get as much of the table in there as you can and then crop the image down. I'll show you how to do that, but it's really important because what if your hands move off screen, which mine do all the time because you can't be watching it, crafting it, and watching the video finder in the phone and making sure your hands are in frame the whole time. Half the time, like if here's the zoom, my hands will start in the middle and they'll creep up towards the top and I have to like edit the zoom to follow my hands. And they're almost off camera anyway and I have basically my whole workbench in frame. So just film as much as you can with the large area, zoom in so that eventually, at the end of the video, you are filling up the whole video with your head just like basically at the top and just, you know, your torso or whatever is in there. If you're standing or showing an outfit, obviously you need your whole body, but if you're just sitting kind of waist up, it's perfect. So originally I started editing my videos on an app called Splice. I used the free version and it worked great for a while. The only issue is that whenever you made an edit, and you like tried to like cycle it through and make it apply, it would take forever, literally hours, hours to edit videos. And then I started using Video Leap. And honestly, I pay for this. It's not very much. I'm gonna check the price and let you guys know what I'm currently paying for it. Um, I just have the yearly subscription. It's like $7 a month. You know, like you, you pay for it, but it's, it's, oh my God, it's so good. It's fast. It's so fast. Uh, one tip I will tell you is that like 
all these video services straight up say, oh, hey, you can put the music from the app on there. We have licensed it out. We have royalty that are like, clients can use it on YouTube. If you get busted for copyright, like push back and say, no, like I have licensed to use this music because we have licensed it out for our users for social media, including, you know, Instagram, I think TikTok, I'm not sure, I have to check on that, and YouTube. Guess what? Lately, when I've been using their phone, and by lately, I mean the last like year and a half, and by phone, I mean music, YouTube has always demonetized my videos. Like now I just use the music on YouTube. Is it great? No, but it is free and sometimes you just need background music. So don't use their music because for whatever reason, the licenses don't transfer and you always get signed for copyright and you always get demonetized, which when you're a small channel and like you're just trying so hard to make pennies, you need every video to be monetized. But from Splice to Video Leap, um, I'm filming this at my table, not using it, but I'm gonna do the voiceover in the video that you are watching. But basically there are all these functions. You can cut a video, crop a video, change the filter effects on the video. I do kind of color correct on my videos a bit. Uh, you can zoom in, zoom out, do the cool transitions. You can add photos, you can add text. There's a lot of really cool things. Video Leap is part of an app bundle. So you have like Photo Leap and all these other ones. I haven't fully explored them and I should because I'm paying for them. And some of them seem really cool and I want to start using them for photos for my Instagram, but I haven't um, quite got there yet. One of them's really neat. It takes your photo and it splits it into like you with a black background and like you're in three different colors, like blue, yellow, and red. And that seems really cool and I want to try that. Um, but it's got a lot of, lot of little features. It's really, really neat and I'm still learning the features. Like I just learned how to do a voiceover over another image. So I don't necessarily have to record over because yeah, you guys can probably tell like my microphone that I used to record over is um, not super great. And it does not sound the same way it does when I'm just talking to the camera like this. So my voiceover isn't great and I'm trying to do more and more just in front of the camera talking like this because it sounds a lot more natural and it sounds a lot more clear. And that might be because I'm speaking to an open room with the 3D walls behind me. I'm not entirely sure, but it does sound better than when I'm doing a voiceover and a microphone in the camera. So I'm trying to do more of that. And I just learned how to do it. This app is awesome. It does so many things and it's really affordable. I would definitely suggest it. When you are making your thumbnails, I have used this app called Over from the start. It's seriously so good. It's all I need. Um, I'll check if I have a subscription. I think it's free, um, but they have presets in there. So you go in, I always start with, well, usually white, but you can do white, black, or transparent for your background. You choose your size. It can either be an image you're uploading or you choose your template size. If you scroll over, there's a YouTube thumbnail template size. I always start with that. And then anything you make that is on that image size is the correct size and dimensions and pixels for a YouTube thumbnail. It used to drive me nuts when I started out and I would make thumbnails and YouTube wouldn't let me upload them. And I'd like look up the pixels and try to like edit it and paint on my computer. And it was hard. This takes all of the guesswork out of it for you and it just does it for you. So it's great. So then you just make your image however you want. You can like overlay things. You can get rid of the background on things. This is seriously what I edit all of my thumbnails in and some of my personal um, pictures if I'm trying to like you know, put in like a thought bubble for a friend and, and make like a funny photo, I will use this as well. But it's got a lot of features. This one I don't pay for, actually. I just remember that because there's a lot of features that it's always asking me to unlock because I'm cheap and I don't pay for it. And it's going strong for three years and it's done everything I need to do without even having to pay for it. So um, other than the ads, it's a really good app and I would definitely suggest that as well for your video thumbnails. And when you have the money, and I do mean when you have the money, not necessarily right away, invest in some equipment. First off, you're gonna need a tripod to hold your phone. This one's awesome, it's my second one. I can change the angle that my phone is in there, the shape, everything, it adapts to regular camera. It's really sturdy, it's got like a little balancer. It's got a bunch of adjustment points so I can make it the different size and heights that I need. This thing's awesome, I'll link this below if you want this particular one, but you don't need this particular one. Like I said, it's my second one. The first one I ordered was like 50 bucks on Amazon. It came with a ring light, the ring light. I mean, it worked pretty well, but like now I have big lights, so I don't use it anymore. Um, and it would sometimes like cast a weird shadow on my face, but invest in this. Uh, this is the only thing that I will like really say you need as a tripod and you don't need this tripod. You can get one of those 
five dollar ones literally at five below and they're just little tiny tripods that you've put your phone in and it sits on the table i had several of those i went through them they did break they're cheap whatever but like i said i was building my channel from scratch it wasn't until i was i think like two years in and really committed to youtube that i started actually spending the money to get proper equipment why because i didn't have the money believe it or not a lot of youtubers are not rich slash most of us are not rich especially if you don't see many, many, many zeros worth of subscribers after our names. And that takes time to build and it's hard to build and some of us will never get there. I'm three years in and I'm at less than 10,000 viewers. And don't get me wrong, I love each and every one of my subscribers. They're so amazing and I get so excited to see that number go up and to read the comments and interact with them. And these are people that are like taking time out of their life to hang out with me. But <laughs> that doesn't actually translate into an income. You have to think of YouTube as something that you want to do for the love of it. You love crafting, you love making videos, you love doing whatever you want to do and you want to share it with the world. That's the reason to do YouTube because that's the only thing that is sustainable. It's not necessarily going to make money and you have to know that going into it. Like that's a real fact. When you have the money, invest in some equipment. Secondary equipment, I would say are lights. So I have these, I love them. Oh my gosh, production value went way up when I got these babies. So I set them up in a tripod. This is not a really good angle. One sec, I will zoom out. There we go. So you can kind of see, I know the corner's a mess, I'm sorry. I don't actually usually have it like that, but we will kind of zoom over here and turn on the lights and you will see, oh, maybe I should show these. I think I showed you like all of them in a video when I put them up, but the yellow light's what I normally do. They also have a very yellow light. I usually just do white. They also have a dimmer switch, which is quite nice. I leave mine on max on the white light. I'm gonna turn them all on. Actually, I'll show the wall so you can see what I'm doing. So white light, maximum, and maximum white light. That really is quite a difference. It takes the shadows off my face. Again, it's just about upping your production value. My wall is a textured wall. Let me walk over there. It's a textured wall, so it's always gonna have these really cool shadows and silhouettes on it. Um, yours probably won't, but that's like a choice I made. That is, I'll show you the edges. It's not super glamorous on the edges. Um, you can get it to quite land up with the lights there. But the wall is really cool, and that's kind of like my thing. Also, I just like it in general. It's a cool wall feature. All right, guys, so I know I went over 10 minutes. Sorry about that, but I think it's, you know, important information. And it is information I keep getting asked about over and over again. So I wanted to make sure that I am providing the information to you guys because clearly it's information that you want to know. So just trying to be helpful here. I hope this video does help you guys if you choose to start a YouTube channel or even just filming in general, like just basic filming stuff, you know, like cheap apps to edit on and uh, they're really good. So I hope you find it helpful. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you here again soon. Bye for now.